Hello dear students, this is Dr. G.V. Otari, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, KIT's College of Engineering, Kolhapur. Welcome to this course, Computer Graphics Unit 1 Introduction. In this lesson, we are going to learn about various techniques used in color CRT monitors. A, color, a CRT monitor displays a color picture by using combination of various phosphors that emit different colored lights. By combining the emitted light from different phosphors, a range of colors can be generated. There are two basic techniques for producing color displays on the surface of your CRT. The first technique is called as beam penetration and the second technique is called as shadow mask. Let us learn each of these in detail. The first method is called as beam penetration method. This method is usually used in random scan display devices. It consists of two layers of phosphors, usually red color and green color, which is coated on the surface of your CRT screen. The color which is displayed on the screen, it depends upon how far the electron beam penetrates into the phosphor layer. A beam with a sl slow speed excites only the inner red layer and hence a red phosphor dot will be visible on the surface of the CRT. Whereas a very fast electron beam will penetrate through the red layer and excite the outer green layer producing the, uh, producing the green spot on the surface of your CRT. At intermediate beam speeds, combination of red and green light are emitted to show two additional colors, orange and yellow. Thus, only four colors are possible using this method. Also, the picture quality of this method is not that much good. The second method uses shadow mask. This type of CRT display device is usually used in random scan systems. It produces a much wider range of colors as compared to the beam penetration method. In this method, there are three phosphor color dots at each pixel position as shown in the figure on the left side of the screen. Each, each phosphor dot corresponding to the three primary, uh, uh, one primary color out of the three primary colors, red, green and blue. One phosphor dot emits a red light, another phosphor dot emits a green light and the third phosphor dot emits a blue light. It also has three electron guns, one for each color dot. A perforated metal grid called as shadow mask is just behind the phosphor coated screen as shown in the figure. The three electron guns are arranged in a triangular pattern that corresponds to the pattern of the red, green and blue phosphor dot on the surface of your CRT. To ensure that the electron gun excites the correct phosphor dot, a perforated metal grid or a shadow mask is placed in between the electron gun and the surface of your CRT as shown in the figure. The three electron beams are deflected and focused as a group onto the shadow mask, which contains a series of holes aligned with the phosphor dot patterns. So as can be seen in the figure, the perforations or holes in the shadow mask, they are arranged in a triangular pattern corresponding to the triangular pattern of the phosphor dot as well as the three electron guns. When the three beams pass through the hole in the shadow mask, they activate a dot triangle which appears as a small color spot on the surface of your CRT. We obtain color variations in the shadow mask CRT by varying the intensity levels of the three electron beams. By turning off red and green guns, we get only the color coming from the blue phosphor. Hence, blue colored dot will be visible on the surface of your CRT. A white or a gray area is the result of activating all the three dots with equal intensity. Yellow color is produced with the green and red dots only. Magenta is produced with blue and red dots. 256 voltage settings are used for each of the three electron guns. Nearly 17 million color choices are possible using this method. The third type of display device is direct view storage tube display device. It is also called as bistable storage tube. In this direct view storage tube display device, long persistent phosphor is used 
due to which lines or characters remains visible until they are explicitly erased. In order to draw a line or character on the direct view storage tube display device, the electron beam intensity is increased sufficiently so that the phosphor will go or assume its bright storage state. In order to erase the picture on the display on the direct view storage tube display device, the entire tube is flooded with a specific voltage which will cause the phosphor dots to assume its dark state. This erasure takes about half second. Because the entire tube is flooded, all the lines and characters will be erased at a time. Hence, display of dynamic motion is not possible using this method. An intermediate state is possible in which the electron beam is intensified to a point that is just below the threshold but still sufficient, sufficient to brighten the phosphor. The image needs to be redrawn or repainted continuously in order to be visible for long time. The picture obtained on the direct view storage tube display device is flicker free due to the long persistent phosphor. The resolution of this device is 1024 by 1024 addressable points on an 8 by 8, by 8 inch square CRT. Direct view storage tube display device stores the picture information as a charge distribution just behind the phosphor coated screen. It uses two electron guns. The primary gun is used to store the picture pattern and the secondary gun called as flood gun, it maintains the picture display. The advantage of this type of device is no refreshing is needed. Hence, very complex pictures can be displayed at a very high resolution without flicker. Disadvantages of direct view storage to display device is, it does not display the colors, as well as the selected parts of the picture cannot be erased. In order to eliminate the picture section, the entire screen must be erased and the modified picture needs to be redrawn. This erasure and redrawing process can take several seconds for complex pictures.